for the first time since we start making these Nobel Prize videos, the medicine Nobel Prize has got such a strong chemical content that we're going to make two. One about chemistry and this one, which is about medicine. And the reason why we're doing the medicine one is because it is recognizing people who have discovered fundamental molecules that can be used for treating disease. In fact, natural products, compounds nature makes, but um, people isolated them, they found their biological properties, and it brought back a lot of memories for me. The prize was divided among three people, but half to two of them, the other half to one person, Dr. Yu Yu Tu, in China. And I'm going to talk about the Chinese prize winner, because as you'll see, her discovery is pretty close to my heart. My colleague Rob, our organic chemist, is going to talk about the other half of the Nobel Prize, not so much about the people as about the chemical, because as you'll hear, it's got a special meaning to him. Back as an undergraduate, 1992, my very first project was working on uh, a compound related to avamectin, which is one of the, the compounds which uh, was discovered and which was awarded the discovery of which was awarded in the, the Nobel Prize this year. Avamectin? Avamectin, yeah. yeah. So people may have heard of ivermectin, which is the, it's a, used as a sheep dip. So literally, to, you, you dip your sheep in it and it gets rid of any parasites on the sheep. And it works for a you know, wide variety of things, human beings even. Um, but the reason I was working on it is because it, it doesn't work on collie dogs. So actually, there are certain type breeds of dogs which um, if you give them avamectin, they have a heart attack, they die. The chemical that UU2 discovered, and I should say that she is the first Chinese scientist to win the Nobel Prize for work done in China, and also she is one of the relatively few women that have won Nobel Prizes in science. The molecule she discovered is called artemisinin, which is a very potent treatment for malaria. The reason why it has this rather strange name artemisinin is because it is made as an extract, or one of the ways of obtaining it is an extract from a plant called Artemisia annua, which grows in China and has grown in China for as long as anybody can remember, generations. It has been a traditional treatment for malaria. Now it's very important to say that the Nobel Prize Committee said that they were recognizing the chemical achievement, not traditional medicine, though traditional medicine in this case was what led to the discovery. I was working on this compound here. Here's avamectin. Um, so you can see it's quite a complicated structure. It's got this very unusual uh, macrocyclic lactone here. And the milbamycins are the same compounds but without this sugar side chain. Um, that's what you were working on? Yeah, that's what we were working on. So we were taking this fermentation product, so these all come from a Streptomyces fermentation, and we were breaking it down and building it back up to make a, a molecule which was retained the antiparasitic properties but didn't kill the collie dogs. The real intellectual achievement of um, Dr. Tu was that she realised that the modern traditional treatment, which was extracting the plant and then boiling the extract, seemed to produce something that was not very effective. So she went back to the ancient texts and discovered that in the old days, people didn't boil it. And this led her to looking at much lower temperature extracts to see what she could find. You can see the importance of this if you look at the structure of artemisinin, which has an oxygen-oxygen single bond, and these bonds are notoriously weak. So if you boil the solution of the molecule, it'll decompose. So people were extracting artemisinin and then destroying it by boiling. It was a really simple but clever idea that led to the discovery. That seems almost too simple for a Nobel Prize. Well, very often, Nobel Prizes are based on simple ideas. Graphene was discovered by using sticky tape to remove layers of graphite. So I think 
you have to be a real genius to have a really simple idea. It's like a, a great big chess game. You've got to tweak and change and degrade a molecule and then build it back up using the rules of chemistry that are, and chemical reactions that are available. And it's, it takes a real strategy and a real technique to understand how to do that and how to build it up. So we, we scan five or six different routes to make our um, particular drug molecule. Completely different routes, but they all started from the same fermentation precursor. They all ended up with the same drug molecule. In this case, and the reason why I feel such a personal empathy is because artemisinin is a molecule that I and my colleague Mike George have been working on for several years. So you can see our video on greener ways of making artemisinin, which we've developed here in Nottingham. And in fact, on the day that the prize was announced, I was giving a lecture in Lisbon in which I was talking about artemisinin. And after lunch at the conference, the chairman stood up and announced the Nobel Prize for artemisinin, and everybody burst into applause. And I felt a tiny bit of reflected glory. This actually was the first scientific document I ever wrote. So this is 1992, I was a, uh, a third year undergraduate at the time. And uh, <coughs> obviously when you work in a company, this is uh, uh, you know, embargoed, it's secret. Um, but because that's over 20 years ago now, um, I, I, I can disclose this, this uh, compound here, although these, these are known in the literature anyway. Um, but actually it was, it was written on Word 5.1. So uh, it's taken me about 25 minutes to find something which would open this document. In fact, I've, I lost the front page. I think there is a very important lesson in Dr. Tu's Nobel Prize. She is a scientist who has worked all her life in China. She has not gone to prestigious labs in other countries. And she has published her work, but not in famous journals like Nature and Science and these other journals, but it demonstrates that really original science can be recognised without looking at some of the parameters that younger scientists now worry about. What is the status of the journal and so on. So if you're a young scientist, it is the quality of your ideas that are important. And if your ideas are really good, they will be recognised. So don't broadcast this till we get back. The question that I think you'll all be wanting to know is how much does it weigh? What is the gold worth? And so just to answer your question, I brought a balance and that's also in my pocket. It's quite a nice little balance. So, here goes, weighing a Nobel Prize. 